Hey, remember Wild Tangent? Picture this. It's the early 2000s and you're a kid using a Windows XP. You're getting a little sick of drawing squiggly lines in MS Paint and you decide you want a little adventure. Well, never fear because this awesome gaming service is here. With a subscription to Wild Tangent Games, you would receive access to loads of casual games that companies would contribute to the service. These included puzzle games, adventure games, space shooters, and all that good stuff. Wild Tangent has been an active but lesser known company in the gaming market since its founding in 1998, but they aren't quite the same as they used to be. Like with all things, the company and their service changed over time, had their share of controversies, and ended up being just another memory for many people who once enjoyed their services. If you go on the Wild Tangent Games website today, you would notice it looks completely different from how it used to. Gone are the days when their games look like this, because nowadays it's kind of hard to find games that don't look like this. As time moves on, things we're used to become relics of the past, but they never have to leave the dark corners of our minds. Who knows, one day we may end up making some silly YouTube video about them. Anyway, I would like to bring attention to one particular Wild Tangent game that, despite its simplicity, is a perfect starting point for the many games that made up the childhoods of people like me. Without further delay, I give you Slider. Slider is an old computer game from 2002 made by Sandlot Games. In this cute little adventure, you control this ball guy named Slider and try to complete various puzzles to beat a series of maps. When you move, all living creatures on the map move with you. You must use obstacles to stop yourself, defeat enemies and sometimes friends, and use everything at your disposal to your advantage as you try to reach the exit. I also want to point out that the Wikipedia page lists this as Snyder, and I totally thought it was a completely different game I had never heard about before. With a title like that, it must be awesome. Now, the story of Sandlot Games is actually a tragic one that came to its ultimate conclusion back in 2019. Sandlot Games was a Washington-based company that made simple, casual games that players of all ages could enjoy. Apart from Slider, they were also known for making classics such as Tradewinds, Super Granny, and Cakemania. In 2011, a company called Digital Chocolate bought Sandlot Games. Three years later, Digital Chocolate went down and sold all of its games to Rock You the company that made widgets for MySpace. Rocky was also a controversial company who actively sought to purchase classic games. They infamously had a data breach back in 2009, and 32 million user accounts were leaked to the public. In 2019, Rocky filed for bankruptcy, taking Sandlot Games down with it. Even still, many of their games are still available on the Wild Tangent website, and some even managed to work their way onto Steam. It's kind of poetic because Wild Tangent Games could almost be seen as an older Steam-like program. It's unfortunate we'll never see more out of Sandlot, though. Anyway, back to Slider. There were three games in the Slider series, Slider, Super Slider, and Slider Adventures. Super Slider and Slider Adventures are still available through Wild Tangent, but the original game is lost forever. There's never really been an effort to recover it or to revamp the series, so it's unlikely to ever come up again in the future. You wouldn't expect a game like this to actually have lore or established characters, but you'd actually be surprised. Upon starting the game, we are introduced to our three main characters. Slider, that's you, Bofo, and Unger. I'm assuming Bofo is some play-on of best friend or BFF. It is actually confirmed that Bofo is your best friend, and Unger is essentially the bad guy. Next time you see your best friend, try calling them your Bofo and see what happens. There isn't much story given, so we can pretty much assume that these three live in this world of mazes and Slider wants out. Unger doesn't like people leaving, so he kills anyone who tries to. But Bofo is actually willing to risk his life to help you escape. The game has a tutorial where you can learn the controls. You can either use the keyboard's arrow keys or the game's built-in compass in the lower left corner, but you'll probably need to wear sunglasses because of how shiny it is. The mazes are pretty basic up until things start to change. The first obstacles that can kill you are holes in the maze walls and floors. Yes, you can actually die in this game. When you hit an obstacle, you see Slider's soul float up to heaven. Rest in peace, dude. However, not everything's out to kill you because Bofo is around. He moves in every direction you go in, but he can't leave with you. Sometimes you also have to sacrifice him. Damn it, Slider, you're an awful Bofo. 
Along the way, you find bubble gum, which stops you from moving too far, ceiling tiles, which cover parts of the map and make you have to guess what's underneath them, and you meet Unger, the bad guy. Simply touching him kills you, so he must have a pretty tough life. No wonder he's always angry. You later find out there are multiples of every character, and you sometimes have to solve puzzles using more than one Bofo, Unger, or even Slider. That isn't explained in the lore. Then you come across waypoints, giant discs you have to collect in order to win. They make for a nice change of pace you wouldn't expect from a game as simple as this. Good on you, Sandlot. Later, you meet two new characters called the Rollers. The vertical one can only move vertically, and the horizontal one can only move horizontally. Other than that, they're just like Bofo. Whenever I see these characters, I can't help but see them as anyone other than Jimmy and Jerry from VeggieTales. You know what I mean, right? But what if? The Rollers, but they can hurt you. Enter the Evil Rollers. Yes, that's what they're actually called. They're the Rollers, but they kill you. They're probably Unger's cousins or something. Think you've seen it all? You couldn't be more wrong, because we also have the Tilt button. This tilts your movement and locks your direction. This actually wasn't included in the demo release that came with a free Wild Tangent trial, so most people who played this game didn't even know about this obstacle. At the end of the game, you get one last puzzle where you have to spell out the name Slider with level unique obstacles. A pretty creative way to cap it all off. If you can't get enough Slider lore, the remake slash sequel Super Slider expands on the universe. A lot of things remain the same, but the animation is cleaned up and the graphics are much more colorful. We also meet a couple of new characters, a potato guy named Mr. Reginald and an electric guy called the Sparkster. Mr. Reginald doesn't move, and the Sparkster frickin' explodes whenever he touches something. What a curse to have to live with. King Midas didn't even have it that bad. There are also keys that open electric doors that look a little out of place in this game. While both games are equally enjoyable, I really miss the shiny compass from the first one. The last Slider game is something completely different. It's Slider, except everything is floating in a void and you're in tunnels collecting food rather than sliding to the exit. Makes you wonder how that gum is sticking there. It's a nice enough game, even if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Even with the expansion sliders received, it's a shame the original has become nearly impossible to come by. The simplicity is effective and the game is super fun. A little challenging, but not too much. Just the right amount. Anyone could have at least a little fun playing it. Sandlot may have been dealt a few bad cards, but they made something really cute and enjoyable for anyone who got to experience it. Let's hope Slider and his friends are still out there sliding around today. Slider remains a perfect example of a game that is good in the guidelines that it sets for itself. It's kind of like Tetris. You don't expect a big open world adventure game, but for the genre, it is really effective and a really good experience. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next memory.